And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. Now, if you're like me, well, maybe it's just me, but I always get confused over which Valeria games are which. But fortunately here, Valeria is very small, so I'm just going to call this Shadow Kingdoms. This takes place in a fantasy land, Valeria, that the good folks at Daily Magic have put together. But I, I tend to like most of the Valeria games. And this one here is a game, it's a kind of worker placement, but it has some really unique mechanisms in it. This is definitely, while this game is all about battle and fighting and hoorah, it's a Euro game. You're drafting dice, you're using those dice to then kind of complete battle plans with fighting, but, and then taking discs off your board and placing them on another board. I actually made the game sound super mechanical. It's not quite like that. Let me show you. game you're going to get one of different factions each faction is pretty much identical with the only difference is well how they look obviously but also there's a chance one of their you know, different colored die will be wild for you now when you get a person you're also going to get a random battle map which is placed next to your board but I want to talk about these boards before I do anything else you'll notice there's a bunch of tokens here what you're trying to do over the course of this game is you're trying to complete battle plans. A battle plan requires a certain number of dice. You can see this one requires two gray and one green die. And then if you do that and you fight the battle and defeat the battle, spending those dice, whenever you do that, you get to upgrade your board. You get to remove one of the tokens on your board. So that's gonna do two things. You're gonna to get to place it over here in your battle plan, which will give you bonuses based on which spot you put it in. So for example, if I completed this battle plan here, it has a catapult on it. If I place this token up here, it says if I just did a battle with a catapult, then I'm going to get two victory points. So I might do that one. But also as you place these tokens here, you will get the things in between them. So if I place one here, I'll get the three gold that's in between those spots. But also, taking things off the board upgrades your board. So at the beginning of the game, you can store three dice, but each one of these that you remove lets you store more dice. I can save battle plans down at the bottom of my board um, to, you know, that I can finish later, but I can only store one. But if I take these tokens off, I can store up to three of them. This here, you are trying to get these gems, but at the beginning of the game, you can only ever have one gem. You take this off, you can now carry three gems. You take this one off, you're plus one strength to all battles. You take this one off, one color die now becomes wild for you. And over here, you can have heroes, you, take, you can only have three, but as you take these off, you can have six or ten heroes. And then, very importantly, you have some tracks here. You have magic, gold, and your reputation. These can only go up to 13 until you take this one off, where then they can go all the way up to 20. So how do you get to that point? You do so on your turn by taking your chieftain and putting them in a spot that's different from where they're at. There are five spots here on the board, and you can also go home to fight a battle here. On the board, you can only go to a spot if there's a die there, because you'll be taking a die from the spot, then the action of that spot. So when a dice are gone, that spot's action can no longer be done. If at the beginning of your turn, there are fewer dice than number of players in the game, then you'll pull dice from the bag equal to the number of players, roll them and put them in each area. So there's constantly more dice being added. The game end is gonna be triggered when someone gets a certain number of battle cards finished. This spot here gives you these gems. These gems can be used in battle to flip dice to the opposite side or to change a die's color to another one. And remember, whenever you go to a spot, you also get the die of your choice that's there. You can go over here, and here you get two magic. Magic can be used to refresh cards and change numbers on dice. And it also lets you fulfill these things here at the top. These are worth victory points, and they're gonna be different, these uh, victory conditions at the end of the game and it depends what you do. So this one says, get your reputation to 18. The first person to do that gets nine points and you get to put one of your discs there. So that's another way to get rid of a disc off your board. 
The next spot here lets you buy these heroes. There are all kinds of heroes. There are fairly inexpensive one. It costs gold to get them. Uh, and so the, the top ones are one-time shots. This guy gives you six gold. The next ones help you out in battles, and the final ones give you victory points at the end of the game. When you buy these, though, the die that you take will give you a discount. It's basically the uh, it's basically six minus the number. So if I take this die three, I get a discount of three to buy that one. If I take a better die, that's a five. The discount's only one. And if I take a six, I get no discount at all. But I might take a one to get a discount of five. That also refers to this spot here. You just get gold by taking a die here, and it's equal to the number of the discount. So if I take that six brown. I'm not getting any gold, but if I take that one, I get five gold. And then you go here to take battle plans. There are battle plans next to the board, and they cost different amounts of gold. Again, you can use your discount to pay a cheaper price. You go here to fulfill a battle quest. If you have the dice on your board that meet a battle quest that you have, you can meet one that's on the board, you'll pay for it, or one that you've reserved. You discard those and move a disc like I showed you. But the numbers are what's going to matter. That, that's your battle strength. You'll add in any other bonuses you get for battle strength. You'll compare it to your reputation marker. The lower number between those is your score. So at the beginning, it's probably going to be the battle. But near the end of the game, if you don't increase your reputation, you won't get much more. And based on that final battle number, will determine how many points winning that battle gets you. That's kind of it. That's a very basic overview. There's a lot of different things going on. You're going to get points from these cards, from up here, from putting spots here, and from winning battles themselves. And you're going to keep going till a certain number of battle plans is done, and then whoever has the most points is the winner. I really like the art in this game. The Miko has great art on all the different cards. It is a little busy. I wish the board was just a little more faded. I know I say this in reviews all the time, but it would be a little easier to see stuff. The dice are a main focus of the game, and they have symbols on the one corner. So if you're having a hard time telling apart the different colors of the dice, and then the discount there, that makes the dice a little busier than I would prefer, but you know, that. I'm being more nitpicky. I really like the generals and the score tokens. They look really cool. The rules are pretty good. I wasn't unhappy with the rules with the exception of they don't have a really good, they have a list of game components over here, but I would have preferred them to show more pictures and stuff. But they do explain and they give a detailed thing on how to fight a battle, which is helpful. They also have some rules in here for a solo variant, which I haven't played, but then they explain all the different champions. They, I guess I'm calling them heroes. You're bad guys, so they're not really heroes. But the champions that you get and what they each do. So that's very helpful. It has a nice bag here for the dice. The Like I said, the, the boards are nice and thick. So the quality here is what I come to expect from Daily Magic. Even these boards, these battle boards, they're all different. They're double-sided. So each one you have kind of a different layout of bonuses and chaining effects. There's a lot that I really like about this game. I love the upgrading your board. What's the best disc to remove first? That's a really tough choice. At the beginning of the game, I think, well, I mean, I watched. In the very first game, I was like, all right, what's everyone going to do? First person, they want more gems. Oh, okay, that makes sense. For me, I wanted to be able to have four dice instead of three. That seemed pretty obvious. The next person wanted to remove the barriers so they could get more gold and magic. And then the last person wanted to be able to put two battle plans at the bottom of their board. I was like, wow, that's great. Now, there are some, I think, that are better than others. The plus one to battle. I don't know if that's one of the best ones to do in the beginning, but I also don't know if there's one that's better than the others. That's so much fun. And then these little battle boards themselves, when you place the discs there, there's two things you're looking for. You're trying to put them down so then you can start chaining these things and getting all sorts of bonuses. But one of the uh, victory point cards here always shows a pattern on it, so you wanna try and do that pattern too. Now thematically, I don't know what this has to do with anything, but mechanically, it's very fun. Those two things itself would make me like the game. They're just good. But I also like the actual mechanisms of putting someone out and drafting a dice. 
So when you go to a spot, you take a dye that's going to help you. But you're thinking a few things. What color is that dye to help you complete your battle plans? What's the number? Because the higher the number, the more points you get. Or sometimes the lower the number, the better discount you'll get. And can I even go to a spot? I might, wanna, I might really need gold, but everyone took all the dice down at the spot where there's gold. It's solid. Gameplay isn't very long. Take a die, do the die. Sometimes you know, it slows down a little bit when someone completes a battle plan because they do that, take this token and do that. Otherwise, it's... And then the game gets tighter and tighter and tighter because we're running out of dice. And then, boom, we fill the dice. And then, da -da 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 -da, and boom, fill the dice. It's interesting. The game is not overly long. I want to say it's 90 minutes. Is that what it says in the box? It's 60 to 90. I feel like, unless you're playing with two or three players, it's going to be 90. I could see I have not played it with five. I'm hesitant to play it with five. I feel like that would take a little bit longer to finish that one, too. It might be upwards of two hours. But I don't think that's an overly long period of time. This has a fun theme. You're a bunch of rabble getting together to go out and fight and stuff, but you're not actually fighting. So fighting is something you're not a big fan of. I think this would appeal to you. And it feels different enough from other games that are out there. And the choices are vast. What heroes am I going to... I, mean, I keep calling them heroes. What champions am I going to get? What? Where am I going to put the disc here? I'm going to get upgrade my board. I know I keep coming back to that, but that's by far. You give me a chance to upgrade in a game, and I just love it. The idea of taking something off and putting it over here, getting th better things on both, it's in Scythe. I really like it in the game of Scythe. I really like it here, too. This may be my favorite of all the Valeria games. There's a lot of good ones out there, but I, I thought this one was a lot of fun. It's thinky, it's interesting. There's a bunch of expansions, which I haven't even messed with yet, but that, that offer various things, but I don't know if I need them even. I'm really happy with this base game because it offers me fun choices. I'm racing my opponents to be, you know, they get the most points and doing things different ways. There's interaction where I'll take the dice that you want and things like that, but it's not too much in your face or being the first to accomplish one of those goal cards. But I was, I was intrigued the whole time. It was fun playing. The artwork and components bring up the level of it. This one is one that I think is worth getting. That's Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.